Welcome to a candidate forum featuring candidates for Elk Grove City Council District 2. I'm Paula Lee, a member of the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and a moderator for today's forum. This forum is co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission. This forum is being viewed live by an audience in the Sacramento Board of Supervisors Chambers and by a live cable television audience at home. It's also being taped for rebroadcast on Metro Cable Channel 14. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization of women and men established to promote political responsibility through informed, active participation in government. The League does not support or oppose or evaluate political candidates or parties. Although our nonpartisan policy does not permit endorsement of political candidates, we do, after careful study, take positions on political issues. But today our mission is voter education for the voters in Elk Grove District 2. The format for today's forum will be as follows. Each candidate will make a one and one half minute opening statement. Then the candidates will respond to questions from our panel. The questions were submitted by the panelists and reviewed by League members. Each candidate will have one minute to respond to each question. And finally, candidates will have one minute to make a closing statement. In the interest of time and decorum, I ask our audience to hold all applause until the end of the forum. Now I would like to introduce the candidates who are running for Elk Grove City Council, District 2. To my far left is Patrick Hume, George Murphy, and Davies Ananiwu. Sitting on our panel is Loretta Kalb from the Sacramento Bee, Cameron McDonald from the Elk Grove Citizen, and Foon Ri, who is a member of the Sacramento Bee Editorial Board. Thank you all so much for participating in today's forum. We're now ready to begin. We drew earlier for speaking order, and so we will begin with opening statements from Patrick Hume. Thank you, Paul. Good afternoon. My name is Patrick Hume, and I am asking for your support on uh, November 2nd. I've grown up in Elk Grove, lived there for 33 of my 38 years, so it is uh, more than a uh, political race for me. It is, it's about my hometown. I was in the first first grade class at Markoffer Elementary, and uh, I grew up in Elk Grove, and I want to continue serving a town that I believe has done so much for me. Four years ago, I was elected to the Elk Grove City Council because the tenor of attitude coming out of City Hall was not very well, well uh, received by the business community, by the community at large, by residents, and by um, most everybody who was associated with it in one way or another. In the four years since that election, we've worked to change uh, the attitude in City Hall. We have a new city administration, new city manager, new assistant city manager, new city attorney. We have uh, eliminated or at least unfilled a couple of deputy city manager positions and reorganized uh, uh, staff in order to have concrete uh, contract administrators to oversee our, our contract uh, departments. We have reduced uh, spending. Uh, my year as mayor, we cut spending by almost $5 million or about 10% of our general fund budget without affecting services to the residents. And so I'm looking to continue uh, to try and be a stable influence on the council uh, to remember that we are there every other Wednesday, more or less, to conduct this business of the city and that we should conduct, conduct ourselves with maturity, therefore. And I want to protect uh, the taxpayers and help to grow jobs. And so again, I ask for your support come Tuesday, November 2nd. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Murphy. I'm George Murphy, candidate for Council District 2, an Air Force veteran. My family and I have lived in Oak Grove for 23 years. I'm retired and I now proudly serve on the Oak Grove Planning Commission. I'm running for City Council because I believe it's time to get our city back on track. People often ask, what do you mean, get our city back on track? Getting back on track means putting people over politics and open, accountable government and decision making based on what's good for the city and its citizens, not special interests. Getting back on track means cutting red tape and reducing the time and expense required to open a business in Elk Grove. Getting back on track means collectively deciding where we want to go as a city. The current member 
has spearheaded the effort to potentially expand the city limits. Do we need more rooftops? Will, will that help home values? Will more rooftops add permanent jobs or add to our already congested freeways? Finally, getting back on track means I will work to make our neighborhoods and streets safe. That's why the Elk Grove Police Officers Association has endorsed me. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Ananiwu. Good afternoon. I'm Davis Ananiwu. I've been in Elk Grove for over nine years. I want to thank you for the opportunity to address you this afternoon. And I ask that you at home and our audience take the time to listen to my views and ideals. And if my views and ideals are in line with yours, I ask that you support the people's seat on November 2nd by voting for Davis Onaniwu, District 2 candidate. Thank you. All right, now we'll begin our questioning. And we'll have you, Cameron McDonald, from the Elk Grove Citizen, go first and direct your question to George Murphy. OK. It's very appropriate since this question is related to his, the matter of whether or not there will be more for rooftops for District 2. Last year, there was a great controversy over a proposed Catholic, Catholic church project for the Shelton area. Many of the local residents were concerned that the size and attraction of the church would cause traffic jams and ultimately compromise the rural atmosphere of Sheldon. The same concern over the preservation of this rural atmosphere of Sheldon has been expressed repeatedly to the council and the planning commission over the past several years. What is the response to that ongoing concern? I think it's a, it's a concern that we all, well, we're going to need to address. The uh, general plan has laid out the rural area. Uh, and the general plan is our law, our Bible. We have to follow the, the law. It wasn't about religion or a church. It was a, it was a, it was a conditional use and a 5-0 decision by the planning commission followed up with the, uh, following the recommendation of staff to uh, recommend denial of the conditional use permit uh, is what I did. And that, and that, that protected the, uh, the rural area. I felt the use, the size and scope for that area was just too great. Thank you. And Mr. Ananiwu. The issue with regard to the church um, is important that we look at uh, what was already discussed. So it is something that needs to be looked into very carefully. We need to make sure that the community is involved in that discussion. We want to make sure that they are very, very involved with that discussion. Thank you. And Mr. Hume. Thank you. Thank you, Cameron. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly that the rural area needs to be preserved. I was on the general plan advisory uh, committee that established the first general plan and established that rural area boundaries. Uh, I've done a lot to try and uh, maintain those um, uh, standards with respect to rural roads and uh, other things as far as density and, and no urban infrastructure. However, I voted happily for the church. I think the churches are good for a neighborhood. Uh, I believe that the project that the council voted on was cut in half almost by the project that the planning commission turned down. It was a size and scope issue, not a, not a uh, uh, fit for the neighborhood issue. Uh, I feel that the church uh, scaled their project down to a size and scope that was acceptable, recognizing the fact that Bradshaw Road uh, will someday grow into something much larger than a two-lane arterial. So I think it was the right decision to do. I stand behind it, and um, I welcome those uh, parishioners to that neighborhood. Okay. Foon Ree, you can direct your question first to Mr. Ananiwu. Um, this has been mentioned, but um, I was hoping to hear the candidates' views a little bit more specifically about the sphere of influence and whether you support expanding that. And if you can also address uh, the concerns that have been expressed by some of the folks in Wilton about Elk Grove uh, growing in their direction. When it comes to the sphere of influence, first of all, I would like to thank the community members who fought very, very hard to make sure that the Flood plan was taken out of the sphere of influence. But let me address the expansion. When any city wants to expand, the question is, how are we going to expand? When are we going to do that? And it is important that we look at the effect that the expansion is going to have on our community and also the region as a whole. Mr. Hume. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, 
I think that the issue with the, the SOI is that a planning process is a long-term process. And if you look at for Folsom, for example, their SOI was approved, I believe, 10 years ago, and it was probably a good five to six years that they were working on it prior to that, and still uh, they have not moved forward with any land use plans. So that's the first thing to consider is we're not talking about something for tomorrow. What we are talking about is seizing an opportunity when the growth pressures that normally exist day to day have, uh, for all intents and purposes, subsided for the time being. And so using that sort of breath to, uh, to take the time to do long use uh, land planning so that we can decide that if we are going to expand and if we do have to uh, uh, seize some job growth issues or uh, other things that, that we have the adequate uh, land in order to do that and then the infrastructure in place to, to handle it. So I think that it was a prudent <coughs> time and I, as, with respect to the Wilton folks, I think their fight was valid. It was just a little premature in that uh, all the SOI would do is establish our seat at the table. It wouldn't establish any land use or, or uh, jurisdictional control. Mr. Murphy. I've been out knocking on doors for the past month. Anybody I've talked to does not agree with the SOI. They're concerned with their home values. They're concerned with more rooftops. They're concerned with congested freeways. And they want to know a plan. And we don't have one. I understand we're in the early planning stages. But we need to, we do, there, is no, there is no faith in the system right now that if we, as a city, plan something with that area, that it will stay that way. We've seen, this, we've seen certain uh, decisions made politically rather than what's good for the city. And there is just no faith that, that what is planned out there will not become rooftops in the future. I would certainly begin to consider uh, the possibility of some kind of initiative to make it tougher to change any general plan uh, designations we put out there. Mr. Ananiwu. Oh, you asked it. Yes, you asked it. Yeah, that's yes. right. Okay. Next one, Ms. Loretta Call. You can direct your question to Mr. Ananiwu. Okay. Uh, you, um, you're, I'm sure, very much aware of the connector plan that's been long in the works, and probably the most crucial decisions that need to be made involve the community of uh, Sheldon along Grantline Road. Uh, and and what would and the question, of course, is uh, the direction that that takes through the community or around the community, uh, and the fate of the community in in the process. So, what if you had to make that decision today? What would be your choice about how to put the uh, connector in place? Well, the JPA project is um, the connector that is going to come from within our community is going to go beyond the other regions. Um, it is important that when we talk about that uh, process or the connector, we have to look at who are going to be involved or affected, the community within our community here, the people within our community that are going to be affected by this connector. So it's important that we do have communications. Currently, there are communications going on, but I will propose that we have additional and more communications with the citizens that are going to be affected by that process. Mr. Hume. Thank you. Um, well, I sit on the uh, Connector JPA board, and so I probably have a little more uh, close background with this. And the important thing to remember is that the alternatives running through Sheldon are basically it would be three of the five alternatives being studied with one of the alternatives uh, continuing to be a causeway that would, would bypass uh, around uh, the entire area. Uh, of the three that would go through Sheldon, we're, one of the things we're studying is a limited access roadway that would actually reorient some of the buildings there and, and try and cut down some of the driveways so that Grant Line itself would function better without having to uh, grow it into its full six lane uh, arterial size. I spent uh, the last three weeks at three different meetings out in the Sheldon area trying to discuss that uh, option and, and what some of the pros and the cons of it are, but the thing to remember is that uh, the um, connector project was one of the listed projects on the Measure A renewal that voters uh, resoundingly uh, passed uh, a few years ago, and so it, it is in the SACOG uh, uh, Metropolitan uh, Transportation Plan for 2035, and uh, it's coming down the pike, and so uh, we have to uh, recognize that, that something is coming, and we need to make it the best something it can be. Mr. Murphy? I've dealt with the connector project for over 30 years in some fashion or another. I think it's a travesty that it's morphed into what it's morphed into. That being said, there, there are no good solutions out there. If we go through the town of Sheldon, we're going to have livelihoods and lifestyles disrupted. If we, go th if we try to go out into the uh, floodplain, we're going to have to fight federal and state agencies. My preference would be the floodplain. 
but that was that is going to be an uphill battle. The community is working working on that right now, uh, as as Mr. Hume said, and uh, when the uh, community decides what they want, uh, I'll have to support the community. They put a lot of time and effort into this. Okay, Cameron McDonald, it's your turn, <coughs> and you can direct the question first to Mr. Hume. If uh, Measure K passes this November and the <coughs> citizens are unable to directly elect their mayor, what do you believe should be the primary role of mayor when it comes to city business? I think if the, uh, thank you for the question, I think if the citizens vote to have a directly elected mayor, essentially uh, the primary role of the mayor should be consistency in leadership, consistency in interaction with uh, the press, consistency in uh, some of the interaction with community groups and things, um, and consistency in how meetings are run and the dialogue that, that uh, transpires. Fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on who you ask, Measure K uh, was kind of a stopgap uh, for the charter that we had discussed and formed a commission to discuss. And so <coughs> essentially, uh, it won't grant the mayor any extraordinary powers or any powers beyond or, uh, the vote of a council member. Um, but I think what it does is it maybe uh, provides a little consistency and a little uh, commonality. Uh, of, of leadership and of, of, of how the city should be run, and also provides the community with a, a, a constant uh, voice of who they can contact. I think right now there's often some confusion over who is the mayor or who was the mayor or who will be the mayor, or even how we get to have the mayor. George Murphy. The uh, elected mayor position, um, I, th I, I have to agree that it would provide some consistency. I think the elected an elected mayor would uh, voted in by the, by the citizenry would, would give some stature to the uh, position as far as regionally, but I don't support it. I don't see, I haven't read in that measure where the, uh, the mayor would be elected by a majority. If we had <coughs> three or four people running, we could basically be back in the same position we are now where somebody with less than a majority vote is mayor. And I don't know if that would carry the weight that it should carry uh, regionally. Thank you. Mr. Anivo? Thank you. I think the citizens will have the opportunity to elect their own mayor, and I support that fully. The responsibility of the mayor should be, I feel that the mayor should be given a full responsibility to be able to interact with the people but on the local level and also on the regional level. It's going to be, she, going to be the representative, the mouthpiece of the community for air growth and being able to direct the activities of the community and also the council as a, as a whole. Okay, Foon Ree, you can direct your question first to, um, to uh, Mr. George Murphy. Um, so for the, uh, for the challengers, um, what's the biggest mistake that the council has made recently and what would you have done differently? And for Mr. Hume, um, what do you regret most um, in terms of an action that you've taken on the city council recently? George? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I think uh, as, as was earlier stated, there, was, there has been some acrimony in the past and I believe there's still acrimony. Uh, we've seen a couple of instances where we've had uh, some pretty raucous discussion, <coughs> discussions, a lot of animosity has built up, and uh, again, knocking on doors, the people who have seen this, they want to change. They want somebody who can work with everybody, who won't take sides, who won't be uh, persuaded or pushed by special interests, who will bring all parties to the table on, a, on an issue and make a decision that's best for the city and the citizens. Mr. Ananiwo. Thank you. I think the, the community or the citizens of Air Groove are looking for someone who will have their interests at heart. I believe that it is important that we have a council member that will have the citizens' interests at heart, who will represent the citizens and listen to their voices and make sure that their voices are being heard. It's important that we see the community thrive, the small businesses in Air Grove, which I say that were supposed to be helped have not done enough, they have not done enough to support the small businesses, and that is a change that we need. Mr. Hume? Thank you. Well, I, I 
agree with my colleagues as far as um, my regret for, for what's happened with the current council is there's been a kind of a devolution into pettiness that I've tried to fight against and tried to steer things back toward maturity and, and uh, focusing on the issues of the city and, and the business at hand rather than uh, personal grudges. Um, and I think that, you know, the, the, the obviously what I thought, saw as the kind of apex of that was this attempt to uh, remove the mayor, define the roles of mayor, and I calmly and consistently tried to steer things back and towards um, how the city should be operating and what business we should be focused on and, and quit slinging mud at one another and, and quit uh, having petting bickerings. And unfortunately, you have to take sides because you're casting a vote yes or no. However, when I served on the Planning Commission, uh, there were often times that I and my colleagues would agree to disagree. We would put our arguments out there. You uh, have an open dialogue in front of the people. You make your decision. They know why you decided what to do what you do. And then you move on and, and you respect one another and you come back two weeks later and do the same thing. Okay, now it's your turn um, to direct your question to uh, Mr. Um, Ananiwu, that's Loretta. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask a question related to um, your answer, and that is uh, the dysfunction on the council over the last year. And I would say, having been a reporter in El Grove for a number of years, I've seen a real transition in the current council as being one that is more open and transparent in decision making. However, it has uh, devolved into uh, uh, some, um, some a lot of dysfunction operationally that I think the voters are noticing. Uh, so the question is, what would the challengers do if they were elected to office to address that specifically? And um, to Pat Hume, uh, what can be done differently if you are reelected to try to turn that around? And so for uh, Mr. Onaniwu first. What I will do is to be able to bring the people together. I would like to bring the citizens together, make sure that their voice is heard in issues that affect the community. When we talk about issues that concern the community, I would like to bring them on the table. It's very, very important that we listen to the people who sent us to the council. Sometimes when we get, people get elected, okay, they forget the community that sent them over there. The voice of the people need to be heard, and that's what I would suggest that needs to be done. Great, thank you. Uh, just to kind of follow up on my previous answer, I, I think the, the important thing is to remember that you're an elected representative. You need to take the job seriously, you need to take the business at hand seriously, but don't get caught up so much in taking yourself seriously. And I think that unfortunately some personal grudges and some vendettas um, have, have soured what was a really well-functioning council. I mean, it, you know, certainly from four years ago and even from two years ago, the changes that were made have definitely uh, improved the relationships of the council. Uh, but the important thing, again, is to remember that, um, you know, for a couple hours every other Wednesday, you ought to be able to set your personal differences aside. You come in, you focus on the, the business at hand. Uh, you do take everything into account uh, as far as um, the different issues. And look, none of us would be up there if we didn't have a desire to serve and if we didn't take that seriously. And so um, we do care about the city. We do care about the decisions we're making. And the important thing is to, to make them with as much respect as we possibly can. And remember that there are going to be differing viewpoints and that people have differing opinions. And that's, uh, that's great. That's how it should be. Mr. Murphy. I think it's perfectly fine to have dif differences of, agree uh, of opinion on projects before the city. But when egos and seeming, when you're seemingly slighted uh, get into the fray, it doesn't do anybody any good. I've, I've watched the city council meetings. Folks that I've watched, that I know have watched city council meetings, were absolutely embarrassed and shocked at what they saw. And for me, I would be straight up front, I will not put up with it. I will not be part of it. I would rather walk off the dais than be part of it. I just, I was shocked. I, 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 I just, there's nothing more I can say about that. Well, that was the final question. And now we're going to go to closing remarks. And just to mix it up a little bit, we'll begin the closing remarks with George Murphy. Leaders, they're entrusted to make decisions for the greater good, provide public safety, and serve with honesty and integrity. I have received the endorsement of the Elk Grove Police Officers Association. Their members trust 
I will prov provide the support and tools they need to keep our neighborhoods and streets safe. A broad range of Elk Grove citizens have also endorsed me. Go to my website, see what they have to say. What you won't see in that list of endorsements are large special interest groups. I thank the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission for sponsoring this forum. And I look forward to your support on November 2nd. Patrick Hume. Thank you. I want to also thank the League of Women's Voters and, and also our panel for putting together a, a great list of questions. Uh, I do ask for your support on November 2nd, and I have received the endorsements of uh, Sacramento Metro Chamber of Commerce, the local Elk Grove Chamber of Commerce, other uh, business leaders, and I think that I am the uh, person who stands uh, most prepared to help write Elk Grove's economy, help grow our job space, and help get uh, get our economy back up to where it, it ought to be and, and support local businesses and remember that uh, businesses are the backbone of any healthy economy. So I think that um, I agree that uh, relations between the council has been strained recently. I don't necessarily believe that uh, that was my fault or that I played into it. I tried to stay above the fray and I will continue to do so. And so I ask for you to vote for Patrick Hume on November 2nd. Thank you, Mr. Ananiwu. Yeah, I want to also thank the League of uh, Women Voters for inviting us uh, this afternoon and also our panel. I have committed myself before I file my papers to serve the citizens of Air Grove. And if you give me the opportunity to be your council member in November, I will serve you respectively to the best of my ability. And I ask for your vote. Vote for the people's seat, Davis Omaniu, November 2nd, District 2. Thank you. And on behalf of the League of Women Voters and the Sacramento Metropolitan Cable Television Commission, I thank the candidates and our panelists for participating. I'd also like to thank all the volunteers who've made this forum possible. This forum has been designed to impart information to you, the voter, accordance, in accordance with our belief that a democratic government depends on the informed and active participation of its citizens. We hope that the insights you have gained from this forum will aid you in making your decision. For voter information and rebroadcast times, please visit Smart Voter. That's www.smartvoter.org. Or you can go to the League of Women Voters of Sacramento County's website, and that is www.lwvsacramento.org. O -R -G. The League of Women Voters is where hands-on work to safeguard democracy leads to civic improvement. So don't forget to vote on November 2nd and help make our democracy work. <coughs>